My guest today was a standout as Harpo in The Color Purple on Broadway and in The Scottsboro Boys Off-Broadway. Now he's playing music icon Barry Gordy in the smashing new musical Motown, The Musical. Please welcome Brandon Victor Dixon. Hi there. Hi, I'm happy to be here. You are BVD, like the underwear. Yes. Do you ever call you BVD? All the time. Do you wear BVDs? Let's get this out of the way. You know, no, I don't. It's just, it's not the right cut. It's just not, it's never really worked for me. They're not cool. <laughs> not, the underwear is nowhere near as cool as the man. You know. I saw Motown the other day. Oh, Why, I, I was there. I think you're going to be uh, working for a while on that one. I, it looks like it. It looks like it. A couple people are showing up. They seem to be having a good time. Yeah, it's They know sold a song out. or two. <laughs> I actually hear it sold out for months, so everybody needs to, like, just, before we even start, just you know, actually, watch this later. Go buy your tickets first. <laughs> yeah, and then exactly, watch while you can, <laughs> if you can. How does it feel? I mean, this, and this is a multi, you know, million dollar musical on Broadway, previewing on Broadway, mm -hmm. big undertaking. You're in the middle of, of get, putting this thing together. How, how, how are you feeling? I feel amazing. I mean, yeah. like, no, it's, it's, it's really fantastic. I mean, it's, it's a big production, but we have a, a, a huge family. You know, a lot of the, the, the actors, my fellow actors I've worked with before, the creatives as well, it's like, and we're really engaged in an, an inspiring endeavor. It's Motown, so who doesn't want to be working on Motown? Exactly. You know? Not only are you playing Barry Gordy, you're working with Barry Gordy. Yes. He, he's there, he's a part of this process. He is there every what, day. Are you just, are you used to that now? Like, oh yeah, Barry's, yeah. I mean, you've been doing it, you've been working with him for a while now. I mean, no, I am used to it. What's so funny is that as, as extraordinary uh, a man that he is and, and as extraordinary as his life has been, it is very regular. Yeah. Like, and it's been very regular. It, it, for a while now. I mean, even when we first started, he's just a very normal guy. It's, but I do have my moments. I, I, and it's funny, I was, I was at his house, it was a couple months ago, and we were working on something, and we were, we were arguing over something, and then I was like, I was like, hold on, I go to the bathroom, and I ran to the bathroom, and I, and I got there, and I was just like, I just told Barry Gordy to wait for me while I go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I have moments like that. Forget sometimes. that, I wanna hear about the house. What's the house like? It's crazy. California? Yeah, it's up. It's like 15 minutes up Bel Air Road. So it's, I, I knew by the 10th minute, I was like, okay, I'm about to see something pretty amazing. Did you and, go swimming? Uh, I did not go swimming, but we did play tennis. Nice. I'm not going to tell you who won. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, do you, so do you get to like ball out with Barry Gordy? I mean, is this like, are you like, like buddies now? Yeah, no, I mean, we hang out, you know, I, I yell at him when I, when I, when I think he needs to, he needs to learn something. <laughs> and, uh, and 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 he yells right back. No, like it's like it's we have a we have a friendship. I'm friends with Barry Gordy. It's pretty amazing. It's a great blessing. That's awesome. Do you text each other? Does he text? He does uh, not text. I like to know technology with these older icons. He does not text. <laughs> he doesn't know his phone number. He does, like you know and like members of the team have the phone and so like right. it's like I I mean I email him or I I know if I get a, a call from a blocked number I know it's him. Right. It's right. like now the the trepidation of something like this is you're doing his life story and is there any sort of fear about actually being him and portraying his story and he's watching it and it, does he ever react to things about moments or he does um and I, I mean i have no trepidation about it because he i mean he really does trust me and our relationship is such that he, right. he trusts me to do what i'm doing and i've, I've done a lot of research and I, I pay attention to him you yeah. know and so I, so there's no trepidation there but there's certainly you know we'll do certain scenes and he'll come up to me and he'll be like you know I really I, I didn't quite do it like that I mean I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't that angry when I did and, and we'll, we'll go back and forth I mean sometimes I'm like okay do the scene do the scene right and he'll do it and I'll be like see you got angry you got angry <laughs> you know it's like in some ways it's sort of like his legacy up there on stage you know what I mean and it's, it's his career being presented do you think that uh, there's any sense from him of wanting to make things seem nicer than they were? Do you, ever, do you feel like, are you able to be mean as Barry Gordy? And um, well, he wants it to be real. I mean, his, his, his main goal is to tell the truth of right. how, how the music was created and how Motown as a family was formed. But I mean, I think obviously when you're, when you're, when you're looking at yourself, he, he wants to balance certain things. He wants to make it real and tell the truth. He also, he doesn't want to feed into rumors that may have misrepresented things that have happened right. at Motown. And so, I mean, I think it's hard to look at a lens of your life and not start to nitpick and things like right. that. But, you know, one of the, the greatest things about Barry Gordy is like he's a very intelligent man and he knows to surround himself with people who can tell him when we think that maybe his perspective is shifting, you know, uh -huh. and, and to remind him like, no, man, like we can, we don't want to edit. 
Like, we want to be real. Like, you need to be proud of the, the things you did and the way you did them. And so it's about making sure that when we go into each moment, we're representing it in a very real way. But mm -hmm. he, wants, he wants colors, you know? He, mm -hmm. wants, he wants three dimensional characters and people, and he wants to fight to make sure that we are truly representing the. Because the other thing is, in trying to put a narrative together that combines so much information, it's, it's hard, and you do end up losing certain details that you would maybe want to be present in your dialogue. And so it's up to us as actors to really layer these things, and that's what mm -hmm. he wants. Mm -hmm. He just wants to make sure that all the colors of these people are, are, are realized on stage mm -hmm. and not try to, and, and to make sure that we have a full understanding of what we're trying to put out there, mm -hmm. you know. It, it's great to have this story on Broadway, and it's, but it's also funny that there was Dream Girls, there was this musical Dream Girls, which is obviously inspired somewhat by, by the Motown scene. Right. Do you have any indication of what Barry Gordy thinks of Curtis and Dream Girls or of <laughs> No, I mean he he never I mean to my knowledge he's never seen really? any incarnation of Dream Girls. I wow, mean, that's interesting. You know, he that's it's not something for him it's not our story. It's mm -hmm. not his story. Mm -hmm. It's a fictionalized version of those kinds of groups and, and things at that time, but for him it's that it's not about Right. You know. What's cool is that uh, Barry sings. Does Barry sing? Did he ever sing in real life? Barry sings. He does. Barry sing. is not a singer. Okay. But, <laughs> but Barry sings. He Have you heard him sing? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, he'll, he'll get up there. I mean, he he calls himself. He tends to call himself a, a combination of like you know Marvin Gaye and, and Donald Duck. <laughs> but he's like I'm like seventy percent Donald Duck is what he says. So, that gets so you are actually. Maybe the biggest uh, untruth about Motown is that you're making him into a beautiful singer up there. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that. Yes, I do try to shove that little thing in his face all the time. I was like, I was like if you're so bad, brother, sing the songs. I actually <laughs> thought that was really elegantly handled. Because when I first saw it, I thought, well, how are they going to make Barry Gordy sing without it feeling really kind of awkward? Right, and like the Barry Gordy show. Yeah, but so how do you think the this, this show pulled that off? I mean, it's sort of like he sort of sings Motown songs uh, your character sings Motown songs sort of to highlight things in his life. Um, right, I mean, I think, well, well, part of it is, I mean, I think we just have to accept uh, off the top that it is a musical, so we're going to suspend our right. disbelief a little bit. But, I mean, uh, and it's something I've tried to be conscious of, of making sure that when we use songs for Barry that they are really about the narrative mm. and they are about him, his creation of music. Because right. if, we, if we accept that, or rather, we accept the fact that Barry is a songwriter. He really is a creative individual, first and foremost. And so as a songwriter, I think we take, it's okay for us to take the liberty there in showing how he expresses himself artistically, mm -hmm. you know, and expresses himself through music. You have this great 11 o'clock number. What is that song? It's called Can I Close the Door. Is it a new song? It is. Okay. Um, you know, it was, it was born out of a meeting that he and I had uh, two years ago in L.A. Wow. And we talked about... You know, we were talking about the character and, and the show and some things that, uh, that we thought were missing or things that we needed to add to our narrative. And he ended up coming back a month or two later with this song. And it was just, it's tremendous. It's really a tremendous number. So who are the coolest people you've got to meet because of your newfound friendship with Barry Gordy? Meeting Smokey was, was really cool, particularly yeah. considering like, they're such, they're best friends. And wow. uh, it, it's funny. The, okay, so we were, when we were in L.A., and we were talking about uh, Smokey and Barry's relationship. We were coming up, with some, coming up with some ideas about some things. And he and Barry was like, well, you know, that's not really how Smokey and I worry. In fact, call Smokey. Call Smokey. So Smokey gets on the speakerphone. And, like, before they even say hello, they start talking trash to each other. Like, literally, Barry goes, yeah, Smokey picks up. He goes, hello. And Barry goes, you ready for me, Smoke? And Smokey goes, man, I'm ready for you. I don't care what day it is, what the time is, what the game, man, whatever you bring to me. And they, they immediately start going after each other. So it's like, you know, it's just really funny. Really, I mean, I haven't met too many of the stars. Smokey's really uh -huh. the only one I've met. But it's been really interesting getting to know the people that have been in Barry's life for years. I mean, these people who joined Motown when they were 20. Yeah. And they've been with him for 40 years. Right. You know, Escobar is... Um, is one of his uh, <clears throat> his personal valet, and Escobar's with him, been with him since he was 16. Wow. You know, and he's done all different kinds of jobs for Barry throughout the years. Uh -huh. He's taken care of him in, a very, in various ways and running different, different aspects of the business. Wow. And that's been really cool, just meeting members of his family who uh -huh. have through the years been different, run different departments in Motown and done different things for the company. But they're, like they, they all say, once you work for Barry Gordy, you never don't work for Barry Gordy. The main focus uh, of Barry's, Barry's had many wives, and he has a lot of children. He's had a very full life. <laughs> He's had a very full but, life. Um, it, it's a romance with Diana Ross. Is, a, is yes. a, sort of a, um, a big chunk of the show. 
Do we have any idea what Diana thinks about this musical being on Broadway? I mean, we know she's excited about it. I yeah. mean, they, they spent some time together recently, and she popped by the house a couple months ago, too. So she knows about it. Like, they talk right. about it, but she hasn't seen anything. Mm -hmm. And Rhonda, their daughter, like, Rhonda's mm -hmm. been a big supporter of the show, and she's mm -hmm. been around. So, I mean, we're expecting to see her soon. I'm not sure exactly when she's coming. But. It's pretty incredible. It sounds like you had a really unique opportunity to be in on the process. I mean, like, you're talking about being in these meetings and these conversations. That's not how this always goes. No, it's not. I mean, I, I, I will say... Yeah, I've been fortunate to, to work on projects where my input has been valued, but yeah. this is this one is a very particular process. I mean, he, he's really built the show in the same way that he built the company. You know, like those quality control meetings that you saw mm -hmm. on the show, that's really have, how we've done things here. I mean, he's, he's written it, but again, he's gathered, you know, the, the people around him to, to help him look at it through a theatrical perspective. Mm -hmm. And he, like Barry says, there are no stupid ideas. Like, the best idea wins. If you, if you think, have something that you think would make our show better, tell me what it is. Explain it. Wow. You have to prove to me that it's right and that your idea is better than mine, but if it's the right idea, then we'll, we'll use it. We'll work on it. He's, I mean, his ego really is, is out of the picture. He's just about creating the best product that we can. For, for our fans and for everybody out there. Another fun thing to do is to watch your hair and your facial hair and your <laughs> wigs yes. sort of through the night. Is that is that fun? Do you like do you like gluing, gluing I mean, facial I hair on? I don't know if I'll call it fun. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's a. You haven't had a beard fall off or anything yet, or get stuck on Valicio. Or... I have not had any of that happen, but sometimes you know throughout because I'm on stage constantly, yeah. and if the glue starts to wear off by by my final number, that beard starts to sneak <laughs> down below my chin. And I'm like. I'm trying to sing it, but I'm trying to bring it back up. See, that's a fun, that's a fun thing to look for when you watch the show. <laughs> it is because you know it's really because that you know that final number. It's such a poignant number. Well, you must it's be such sweating a great too. Song. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm sweating at that point. But it's like anytime I start to feel that beard, then I'm like, oh, this is ruining. The, it's ruining the moment. It's ruining the moment. Come back. It's you know. You know, but, just grab it and throw it off. Then people people love that. I was like, they probably would. <laughs> <laughs> Except that Chuck LaPont would not because he'd have to make a new one. <laughs> <laughs> now, when we first saw you back in The, the Color Purple, you were Tony Tony nominated performance as Thank Hoppo you. Thank you. in The Color Purple. You had hair. You, you're smooth. You're smooth now. Yes. Is is this for for the role? Or? Uh, this is uh, as the Lord decreed. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. The Lord decided it was so when time. When did that happen? About two years ago. Uh huh. Yeah. It's, it it looks started good. happening. When I was about 29, and so it was like, uh huh. Well, thank you. I, Do you like it? I mean, I, I have to. This, like. is, this is the way it is. I have to shave it about every two days, every two three days. Uh huh. But um, but you know, I'm I'm good with it. Fortunately, my mom, when I was a kid, my mom was afraid that my head would come out lopsided. So you know, before the skull was fully firm, she would, she would kind of just she shape. molded your. Oh head? yeah, what? she would. <laughs> for my brother and I both, because you know, babies, their their skull isn't firm in the beginning, and so she would just. Wow. You know, she did good work. She did That's good awesome. work. Yes, I, I, I feel pretty job. aerodynamic. I'm not. I'm, I'm okay with it. <laughs> it's all symmetrical. <laughs> and, well, now you could be like the, a chameleon. I can do anything with wigs, right? Now exactly. it's just like you can you can have all kinds of crazy. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we're really going in this time. The yeah. beard and the mustache. And it, I mean, my first big change. It's so funny because it, it happens in 30 seconds, and the audience they they start to laugh. Because I, I come, I, I have that processed wig, and right. then I come right back out, and suddenly I have a mustache and an afro, right. and they're like, <laughs> "Okay, all right, keep going, keep going." <laughs> so you grew up outside of D.C., right? Yes, Gaithersburg, yeah. Maryland. Okay, and what what would your parents do? I mean, besides mold your your head, <laughs> what was what would mom do besides that? Uh, my father is an electrical contractor, uh -huh. and we have our own business. So my mom, oh, okay. uh, my mom was finishing college at the time and running the business. So. And I heard that when you were pretty young, you sort of said, "I'm going to be an actor. I'm not going to work for the family business. I'm going to I'm going to be on Broadway." I mean, my father wouldn't have had me working for the family business. Oh, I mean, really? Yeah, no. I mean, it's not something that he's ever wanted uh, myself or my brothers to do specifically. Huh. He's done it to make sure that we have the opportunities to do whatever we want to do. So they were they were cool with this with. Oh yeah, I mean, obviously there was a a discussion was had when I decided to leave Columbia early. To right. Go yeah, yeah. Dress so up you, in a you, costume while you were at Columbia, you booked the Lion King yes. tour. Yes. So you so you put your studies on on hold. Yes. And then amazingly, you actually went back while you were in the Color Purple and finished. Yeah, when I was doing the Color Purple, um, 
I, I finished uh, my time at Columbia. Wow, and, uh, that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, it was it was funny. I was excited to go back at the time. I mean, I had a semester to finish. Yeah. But once, once it started, I, it was weird, you know, doing my show and then finishing my theater major at the same time. It was, it was a little <laughs> odd. Tony <laughs> nominee. <laughs> it was like, you know, going to going to class with my classmates who would see me in the show. It was interesting. You went to London when you were. Pretty young, right? To, yes. to study. I studied at the Br the British Academy of Dramatic Acting for for a summer. Which sounds very dramatic. It I, does. It, it does. This is not anything like. Body in Oxford. Doing, you weren't doing Motown songs. Over no, there. no. What we were you, studied what were you Shakespeare, doing? Shakespeare and, and Christopher yeah. Hampton at Bailey Old College. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like it? Oh no! It was a wonderful experience. Yeah. For me. I mean, I, I, I was actually, I was one of the youngest people in the program at the time, which was really great for me, because everybody, most of them were in like MFA programs at, mm -hmm. at Tisch and Juilliard, and, and so just to be working with, with people of that caliber and talent was fantastic, and getting uh, guest lectures from, you know, Sir Derek Jacobi and Jeremy wow. Irons uh -huh. and Kevin Spacey, things like that, it was just a wonderful time, and also to, I mean, I've also, I've always studied classically, because it's, uh -huh. it's just, just important, an important foundation, so being there and in that setting where I could really just concentrate on on living my art was a really a really special experience for me. So Color Purple was was a, a great I, I, I mean you were there for a long time that was a great experience for you. Yeah I mean uh, I mean I was there for like a year and three months. With one. Felicia Fields straddling you every night. Oh the glories of Felicia Fields. She, where is she? She's, Chica she's a yeah, Chicago she's in actress. Yeah she's Chicago right now. I mean that's that's her home and that's her main base yeah. and she's, she's been I mean she just finished a show there the other day I'm pretty sure. I mean uh -huh. we, we, we've been texting but. Uh, I remember that when you guys were in rehearsals there was, there was all these like financial question marks about the show and then all of a sudden one day Oprah walked in right? I mean, yeah. That literally like in rehearsal like did you have any indication that was happening? Not at all. We were just rehearsing one day, and then the door opened, and there were cameras, and you know, there, Oprah was yelling because that's what she does when she meets people. Oprah, you know, and she, she loves was. Harpo. I mean, her whole she named her whole company after Harpo. Well, you mean it's Oprah backwards? I, I know. You, know? you were playing Oprah backwards exactly. on Broadway. I was. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad she didn't go in for like you know. A bet you could have done it with her. You could, she could have straddled you. There you was there was talk of her maybe talking? doing like a week or doing a performance. Oh like there was talk. It, that would have been epic. It never manifested itself, but it would have <laughs> been extraordinary. Um, I also loved you in the Scottsboro Boys oh. down at the Vineyard Theater. Thank you. That was a very very special production. And you actually weren't able to do the show on Broadway. No. This is uh, this is one of those showbiz things. So you you had we for years we were waiting for you to play Ray Charles yes. in the Ray Charles musical, which had many different titles, right? Yeah. Did the title was, change? It was Ray Charles Live, and then it was Ray, and then it was Unchained My Heart. So yeah, right. Did you actually be. do it? You did it somewhere. You played. Yes, Ray we did it at the Pasadena Playhouse. Okay. That's where we started it. Okay. And then we began our journey to to come here and then I remember feeling bad for you because you were announced to do this other show and then you couldn't do Scottsboro Boys and then the other show didn't happen right and then you're sitting at home going like well I could be doing that show I mean that I mean that wasn't exactly how I, how I was sitting at home but I was, I was, I was like, but, but I was sitting at home were you throwing things <laughs> Oh, uh, that was a trying time. But I mean, you know, these these things happen. It's tough. Yeah, yeah it is tough. I mean, particularly because you know, with at, at the vineyard, we were almost able to transfer in April. Right. You know, we were, we were like just a week away from being able to transfer, transfer, and and we couldn't do it. And that was, uh, I mean, just not. I mean, leave the Ray Charles stuff aside, not being able to go forward with the show was really hard for me because that was a very special production, and what we. What we had put together at the vineyard with that yeah. group of people was was pretty special. Yeah. But I mean, I was so happy that the show got to continue to have life, and and I mean, I saw the production on Broadway. It was great. Right, and you're on the recording. Yes, I am on the recording. It's wonderful. Get, I got get, that. Get that I got that. Got that. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's mine. <laughs> I was actually, and you also did Cotton Club Parade. Yes. And then Josh Henry, who. Took over you. Is he like your black swan? Because <laughs> I noticed like Josh Henry is now taking over your roles twice because he did the Scottsboro Boys. Yeah, thing. and then he came in for. So is he that though. guy that walks in? You're like, oh, here, here, here hi, it's Josh. Like, oh, Josh. No, <laughs> it's funny. No, I mean it, that that does seem to be the trend. And Josh, which, what's great, Josh is a great guy. Like yeah. we're, we're friends, and he's he's really talented. So it's been great that you know Josh has been able to come in and and maintain these shows and and still make things great. Yeah. It is definitely the life of a, of a New York Broadway actor. I mean, you're relying on like people being able to write the checks and get these shows done. Well, yeah, but but then but then the thing becomes to to do less of that as things go on. And I mean, mm -hmm. for me, uh, there has been a big focus to to not just do shows 
just you know just to be acting in shows, but to really make sure that I am uh, a participant on the creative end and to to transition onto the the other side of the table. And I've been very conscious in in choosing projects that take me in that direction. Because I'm not just thinking about my part in a production; I'm thinking about the production as a whole, uh -huh. and it's important for me to be able to bring. Uh, my knowledge and my powers to bear on that side of things as well. Mm -hmm. To change subject, what is the, I know when you were in Color Purple, the women in the audience went crazy for Harpo. I mean like that whole, there was like screaming and carrying on. Now you're, now you're smooth, very gordy. So what, what's the stage door like? What are, do you, are the well, women, how do you handle the women? I'm smooth, very gordy, but you know, with all that hair, they rarely know who I am. Oh really? And, this, and I, ha I have the Barry Gordy issue. Barry would talk about the fact that you know, you know, he yeah, he ran this company, did all these things, but man, the girls were all about Smokey Robinson. Ah, all about Smokey happening Robinson. With Charles Brown? It's happening with Charles. Too. <laughs> it's like once they see this tall, light-skinned fool, suddenly they don't know who I am. <laughs> they don't know what's going on with me. It's so Barry tells the story how about you know one time he was he met Smokey after the show and they walk out and all these girls are mobbing him and and Smokey's like, but wait, that's that's Barry Gordy. He pays me. And this girl like hands Barry her purse and goes and grabs Smokey. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like that's just what it is, man. I mean, no, that, I mean, but it's 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 funny. They they don't recognize me, but then people are like, no, he's Barry Gordy. Then you know they 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 show me they show me love. But color purple that that was happening. Yeah, tell the color purple they 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 <laughs> they they picked me out off the top. So that that was a good time. So you have a couple more weeks of previews for yes. Motown. I also want to say it's a beautiful show. I mean Thank you. the the lighting and the costumes and the is it, it when you're on stage? A lot of times you're on stage while these musical acts are are performing in full. I mean, is it just amazing to see? It is. I mean, uh, Emilio Sosa's costumes are wonderful, yeah. and Natasha, Natasha Katz's lighting and David Korn's yeah, set. Like it's the way the the way the colors and the powers combine. It's it's really fantastic. And there are. I mean, I really wish I could see the show in general because right. I know there's a lot of things going on that I have no idea about. Right. But but even just from the wings, it's. Uh, Particularly our our first production. It's funny as 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 time was going through, watching my co-stars go out there and and perform in these sets and in these costumes, and to see the audience respond to them. I mean, I I felt like Barry. I was very proud. Mm -hmm. Very proud. Well, you should be. Yeah. It, it's a great show, and everyone needs to check out Motown, the musical. Please do at the please, Lafontaine please. Theater, opening April fourteenth. Thank you so much for coming. No, it's, it's my pleasure. Great Thank to you see for you. having I love me. Love the show. Loved it. Really loved it. Everyone needs to. Go love it. Yes, go love it. Come back. See us. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.